All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited to, to get going tonight. I am April Ashcroft, and this is the Healing Power of Plant Foods cooking class. I'm excited to have you here tonight. If you want to gain optimal health, if you want to lose weight, if you want to reverse your diabetes or heart disease or prevent it in the first place, if you want to improve your outcome with cancers, you're in the right place. I'm going to teach you about how to go about doing that. And it's all about the food. Like one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Michael Clapper, he says it's the food. It's always been the food. We need to change the food if we want to make those, those things happen so, or improve the food. So um, I am excited to share this message. I've got a passion for health, have had it for probably 30 or 40 years when I watched a lot of my family members suffer with the standard American diseases. Before I go on, who is here for the first time? Have you guys always been here? You guys are new and you are new as well. Awesome, thank you for being here. I'm so happy to have you. Um, and I wanna welcome those who are watching uh, from home later. I don't think this is live, but later on. If um, you are watching this on YouTube and you want the recipes, I keep the recipes in the files on my computer. So if you want them, I am happy to send them to you. Just send me an email at healthforlifecooking.com. Um, the four in that is a number four. So health, number four, lifecooking.com. Or sorry, health for life cooking. That's my website, healthforlifecooking at gmail.com. I'll still send those recipes out. And you guys too, if you get home and you forgot your, you forgot your uh, recipe, take your recipes home or you lost them, be sure and send me an email and I'd be happy to send those to you. Come on in. If you could sign the roll, that would be awesome. So just a little bit about myself, since quite a few are new. Um, I come from a standard American family. We ate the standard American diet, and I've seen all my fam family members get the standard American diseases. And I decided a long time ago, back in my early 20s, when I was watching my grandparents um, deal with the complications of diabetes and heart disease and bypass surgeries, uh, both my parents died of cancer, and I, my mother was, I was very young when my mother passed away, so I don't really remember much of her suffering, but I watched my dad uh, triple bypass and just have seen, you know, my family members deal with the effects of these diseases, and I, I decided a long time ago that I was going to do everything I could to reverse or change what many would say is my genetic destiny. I don't believe that just because my dad had diabetes and my grandparents had diabetes and all my aunts and uncles have diabetes that I have to get diabetes because I don't. I know that now. I know that there's something that I can do every single day to reverse that. Come on in, sign in. Thank you so much. Um, and it's all about the food. It, um, exercise is always a huge benefit, but I have found that I, I've been, I, actually I got into exercise before I got into eating really healthy because I found out that if I exercise really hard, I could eat as much as I wanted. Well, as I got older, things kind of started catching up with me. I wasn't feeling so good, and so I was searching more into the dietary parts. And I, and I pr grew up on a pretty healthy standard American diet. I was eating whole wheat bread and, um, you know, beans. I, my favorite food as a kid was bean burritos and bean tostados, so I grew up eating beans and whole grains, and um, we didn't have a lot of sugar around the house, although when I got to be a teenager, I became a sugar addict, and that was a real problem. In fact, I had a harder time getting off the sugar than I did anything else. So, um, but, can't remember where I was going with that, but anyway, it's all about the food. And tonight I'm gonna show you how to make um, these plant foods taste really good. And that's what it's all about. It's about including more plant foods into your diet. This isn't about excluding, although there are things that are important to decrease or completely get rid of if you so, so desire. Um, but this is, about, this is about abundance. It's about getting more whole natural plant foods into your diet. More fruits, more vegetables, more whole grains, more legumes, beans, nuts, and seeds, and um, just more. This isn't about starvation at all. And it's not about willpower. So many people will say to me, you have so much willpower. It's like, I, it's not willpower. It's I love, love the food. In fact, as I was eating my cold sweet potato out of the refrigerator, as I was packing up my stuff and getting ready to go, that was kind of my dinner, I was just saying, this sweet potato is so amazing. And just thinking about how nature is so amazing, how it makes foods taste so delicious. But you have to kind of change your palate over time. You know, at first you're so used to those, to those strong, high-flavored foods that, that give you a dopamine hit. And you got to kind of deregulate that to where you're enjoying the natural plant foods, the, the natural things. And just you just 
see how delicious they taste. You know, the, the flavors in them just get greater as you get more used to it. Anyway, we're going to move on to the cooking. <laughs> we're going to do uh, mushroom lentil stroganoff tonight. And we're also doing a Mediterranean kale salad. So um, April, I'm kind of in the middle of winter and summer. Spring is where we're at, right? But we're still, we're, we're just coming out of the cold weather and we're going into the hotter weather. And so I'm kind of wanting to do some cooked things and I'm still, and I'm wanting to get into some more raw things. Although this time of year we're limited in some of the fresh produce that's, I mean, we can always get everything at a grocery store, but I like using locally grown fresh when I can. Um, a good example is tomatoes. I hardly ever buy tomatoes until they start coming off the vine because they're just not very good. But I wanted to show you because I'm not doing a, any summer classes through community ed. They're not doing summer classes this year. I wanted to do like a really good summer salad. And so we're gonna do the Mediterranean kale salad, which is one of my absolute favorite salads. And then I wanna show you a really good salad dressing to do on a main dish salad. And I'll kind of talk about the, sa the, the main dish green salad. And um, then we're gonna do strawberry ice cream for dessert, because we always have to have a dessert option too. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start getting this stroganoff going. And I love questions because I talk a lot about the foods and, and you know, why they're so good for us. And if you have a question, please ask, because sometimes it will remind me about something that I meant to talk about that I may not have thought about. So I have little notes up here, but sometimes I forget. In fact, sometimes I get so much into, into talking about this, the things, I forget about the food. <laughs> so watch your recipes. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, normally they print the recipes front and back on one sheet and they were kind of having problems printing recipes. So if you have a sheet with a recipe on it and there's nothing on the back, you're missing the other half up on the table. So because some of them she printed two page and she had about three that were front and back. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with an onion and, and um, again, this is our stroganoff. And this is just a, yellow, a regular yellow onion. I use those pretty much exclusively, but it's good to get variety. Or um, onions, when we cut them, as you know, they make us cry sometimes. And those are organosulfur compounds. Those are powerful anti-cancer compounds. And the more you chop them, the more that, that sting in your eye is much more powerful, right? The more you sit here and chop it, and that's because the more you chop it, the more those compounds become more available to do what they need to do in your body, to go in there and kill, kill, kill cancer cells, repair them, signal to your immune system that you've got a, a problem cell that they need to get rid of. So we want to eat onions. Large European study shows that the people who eat the most onions have 60 to 70% less risk of all cancers across the board. And this little tool right here, if you're not familiar with it, with it, is called the Vidalia Chop Wizard. From what I understand, Beth and Bed Bath and Beyond are out of them, and I think I don't think my friend that told me that said that you could even get them on internet. So um, if you could find one, they're a great tool to have. Bed Bath and Beyond usually has a whole pile of them. Uh huh. At Albertsons? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks for letting me know that. You know, there are a lot of these. If you go on Amazon, there's a lot of different choppers. This one, I was reading the reviews because I really wanted to find one that wasn't made in China, <laughs> but I was having a really hard time. They pretty much all are, but there's a lot of them. And this one, according to the reviews, is like one of the better, um, better ones that hold up a little bit better. So, so I've got my pan here on, um, we're going to go just kind of medium high, whoops. Medium high. And I don't have any oil in my pan at all. I don't use oils ever. Oils are 120 calories per tablespoon of pure 100% fat, highest calorie, lowest nutrient food that we consume. 
It's a really bad thing to be eaten if you're trying to lose weight. At 120 calories per tablespoon, you know how much food you can eat for 120 calories that's going to actually fill you up? If you eat a tablespoon of olive oil on your salad, that 120 calories isn't going to fill you up at all. If you have an apple with your salad instead, that apple's going to fill you up, so you're not going to eat as much. Um, extracted oils also increase risk of heart disease. It slows, they've been shown to slow blood flow 40% within four hours of, of consuming it, a meal that's got olive oil or any kind of oil. Olive oil, canola oil, safflower oil, avocado oil, um, flaxseed oil, any kind of oil that's taken out of the plant from its original source is not healthy for the body. We need to get our oils from whole foods. And the benefit of that, of getting it from a whole food like an avocado or a nut or a seed, is there's fiber in that plant that's going to bind some of those fats to the fiber. So you're going to chew that food, and it's going to take hours for those oils to get into your body and do what they need to do. If you take a tablespoon of olive oil and put it down with your food, it's, it's free oils. It's going right where you don't want it to go. So if you want to learn more about that, and I encourage you to just not believe me, um, go to Dr. Dr. Esselstein on YouTube. In fact, it's written on your recipe sheet under homework. I'll be asking you about that, so go home and do your homework. Um, uh, go watch some of his videos, and he, he'll tell you all about uh, oils and what they do to your endothelial cells. They basically shut down nitric oxide, which is very important for keeping your arteries flowing very smoothly, like Teflon. We don't want to shut down nitric oxide production. So I just put in two cloves of garlic, of minced garlic. And I still don't have anything in my pan, but it's starting to get a little bit brown, if you can see that. So I'm going to take some water, and then I'm going to just put a little bit of water in the bottom of my pan. And that water is going to kind of help to remove that, the browning that's on the bottom. And that flavor from the browning is going to come into your dish. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and add our mushrooms. And I've got uh, one and a half pounds, I hope you like mushrooms, <laughs> one and a half pounds of um, just regular white button mushrooms. Studies out of China show that women who eat just one button mushroom, just one of these babies, one a day, cuts the risk of breast cancer by 64%. Couple that with green tea, which they drink a lot of in China. Um, bumps it up to 89%. So we want to eat our mushrooms. A few other things about, I'm just going to put the lid on here and talk about mushrooms for just a second. Um, mus uh, mushrooms contain estrogen blockers to keep estrogen levels low. Um, that's decreasing risk of all types of hormonal, hormonal type cancers. We want to keep our hormone levels low, especially estrogen for women. They are angiogenesis inhibitors, which means angiogenesis is when your body creates blood vessels to, to feed a tumor that you have in your body, to feed it so that it'll grow. Uh, mushrooms stop that, that blood vessel production. So is that unique to the white mushrooms? No, that's mushrooms across the board, yep. But the white button mushroom was the, was the example that they used in the study. Just to, just to say, you know, just a basic mushroom will, will decrease risk. Uh, mushrooms are a great probiotic. They feed your gut bacteria, one of, one of the best ways to feed. They contain 22 proteins that lower cholesterol and blood pressure at the same time. No pill will do that. Uh, they actually decrease the absorption of carbohydrates from a meal that you're eating with the, with the mushrooms. In fact, that carries over into the next day. So if you get up and have some pancakes for breakfast, those carbohydrates from those pancakes won't absorb into your, into your body as much and cause a blood sugar problem if you had mushrooms the night before. Crazy that food can do that. Okay, so what I want these mushrooms to do is to get nice and bubbly. And we are going to uh, just let those, let those go for a minute. So I'm going to come over here, and um, I think I'm going to just get the, actually, I'm going to do the salad dressing just kind of while we're waiting for that to, that to um, cook down a little bit. So I'll talk, the, talk about the salad a little bit later, but we don't want to have a 150-calorie salad 
or 200 calorie salad and put 200 calories of oil on our salad. We want to have a good healthy salad dressing and I'm going to show you how to make a salad dressing that, that has oil in it but it's not oil, it's from seeds, okay? So this is a creamy tahini dressing and what I've got here, so when you go and you look at your your bottles of salad dressing on the shelf before you buy them, which I hope you all do before you buy anything. You want to look at labels. Um, you're going to see sugar probably. You're going to see vinegar maybe. And you're going to see oil. Okay, I've got all three of these right here in this jar. I've got dates, which are my sugar. I've got sesame seeds and sunflower seeds, which are my fats. And then I've got the vinegar. Okay, and I've got them soaking so that when I blend them up, they're going to blend up very smooth and creamy. And it's going to be thick by itself because the seeds and the dates have fiber and that's going to help to thicken. And this is really thick. It's been setting since last night I put these on. And I've got um, a, only, I've got a half a cup of vin rice vinegar and this is an unseasoned rice vinegar. We want to, if you're getting rice vinegar, make sure you look at the label again and make sure there's no sugar in it because we're going to add sugar with our dates and natural sugar. And so a half a cup of rice vinegar and about a quarter cup of water and I want a half a cup but I like to leave a little bit out just so I can if my stuff splatters up on the jar, I can have use some water to, to get it down, which most always happens. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just blend this a little bit before I add the lemon juice. Just as I expected, it splatters up on the side. You can see how thick that is, but it, we're going to thin it down with a little bit more water and we're going to do some lemon juice. And we want, how much lemon juice do we want? We need three, um, let's see, juice of one lemon. That's right. And usually one lemon has about three tablespoons. These little lemon squeezers are great little tools as well if you do lots of citrus, which I love doing citrus. It's a great flavoring um, for to kind of take the place of salt. Vinegar, lemon juice, lime juice, even, even you know, uh, orange juice is, is really great for that. That's a really big lemon, and so I think I might just stop with that. That was about three tablespoons. Oh, hello. Got a fire going here. <laughs> The mushrooms uh, juice must be flowing over the side and getting down there in the... Those are looking really good. I'm just going to decrease that a little bit. We want to keep... We don't want to let the steam come out. We want to keep that, those juices in there because I'm going to blend up some of this liquid with the sauce that we're going to put over the top. Okay, we'll go ahead and blend this down. put just a little bit more lemon juice in there just to make sure we've got enough. There we go. Sesame seeds, by the way, have the, one of the highest calcium um, contents of, of all plant foods. In fact, I've got a new handout up there. If you've been before and think you have all the handouts, that's a new one. Um, it shows the calcium content of many plant foods. There's probably, I don't know, 60 or 80 
plant foods listed on there of the calcium content. We want to get our calcium from plant-based sources. That's where calcium comes, comes from originally. It comes from the ground. Cow's milk has got calcium, but we only absorb about 34% of it. And we absorb a lot more of it from like leafy greens like kale. You absorb 50% of the calcium in kale and only about 34% of the calcium in milk. And milk comes with a lot of baggage that we really don't want. All right, so that's our, that's our creamy, creamy tahini salad dressing. You'll get a chance to taste that when it's on our green salad that we're going to do tonight. All right, let's move over here to our mushroom, back to our mushrooms. And they are nice and soft. So we're, oh, we, well, we still need to put in our spinach. I forgot about, forgot about the spinach. So we're going to put in our seasonings as well. We've got a teaspoon of paprika and a teaspoon of tarragon. This is just going to add some nice flavor. I don't like to put this, the seasonings in at the very beginning. I like to put them in more towards the end. And then we're going to go ahead and add our spinach. And this is a half a pound of spinach. And I just, I chopped it a little bit. You can put it in there whole, especially if it's a real baby spinach, which is, this actually was, and it would probably be fine if I didn't chop it. But I just like to make sure it's chopped up. You know, it's small enough to where you, when you eat it, you're not having strings of spinach. You know, I don't like that. So we'll just put the lid on right there like that. So some leafy, leafy greens, we need to be getting them in so much more than we are right now. I put them in everything, almost literally. We're doing our kale salad tonight. We're doing our stroganoff. And of course, if you've had stroganoff in the past, you've probably, probably never had greens in your stroganoff. But I put, I literally put them in pretty much everything. So any kind of traditional dish that you have, I encourage you to put more. Just put some green leafy vegetables in it. You will hardly even know that they're there. They're super delicious. They're high in thousands and thousands of micronutrients that are critical to our body. They help their anti-aging compounds, which are also known as antioxidants. We hear that word, antioxidant. And that protects our cells and keeps us from aging. Uh, scientists believe we get 10,000 oxidative hits a day. And um, so we need to eat lots of antioxidants to combat those, that oxidation. The brain especially is very susceptible to oxidation. So we need to be eating lots of antioxidants. Um, they are powerful immune boosting foods. In fact, green leafy vegetables feed your immune system. We want to have a strong immune system so it can fight off viruses and bacteria and all kinds of bad things around us. We want a strong, healthy immune system. They're the most anti-inflammatory food. Um, that's because they're so high in antioxidants. And people put on a high antioxidant diet have less inflammation in 14 days than people on a low an an antioxidant diet. And again, green leafy vegetables are the highest. They're high in folate. folate. Uh, people with low levels of folate have greater risk, three times greater risk of depression. They're high in magnesium. Um, there are 300 biological processes in, in, processes in the body that require magnesium, and energy production is one of them. Are you low on energy? Eat more green leafy vegetables. Um, they're high in calcium. Where does the cow get her calcium from? She's not drinking glasses of milk. She's out eating grass all day. That's where we need to get our calcium from. Again, calcium comes from the ground. It's a mineral. We want to get it from, from plant foods. Um, it, they're high in protein, 29 to like 49% protein in green leafy vegetables. In fact, I hope you've all picked up a, a, fl a, a handout. It's the light green one, and it's the plant-based proteins. Every plant food has protein in it. You're getting lots and lots of protein tonight. In fact, if people ask you where are you getting your protein, turn around and say, where are you getting your fiber? Because fiber is much, much more important. <laughs> um, they're high in vitamin K, and vitamin K helps to regulate calcium balance in the body. De decreasing risk of spinal fractures, hip fractures, and fractures across the board. Like, like uh, hip fractures were like 64%, or spinal fractures were like 64%, and hip fractures were like 71%. Decreased risk of getting those. So we need that, those green leafy vegetables. Oh, and greens are high in lutein. People with the highest levels of lutein in their blood have the cleanest arteries with no atherosclerosis. I mentioned uh, nitric oxide production from your endothelial cells in your arteries. That happens by with eating leafy greens. That's where that's what activates 
the, that nitric oxide production. So uh, nitric oxide is the most powerful vasodilator, meaning it dilates your blood vessels. So when you, you're out running around with your grandkids or you go out for a run or for a hike and, you're, and your heart's beating and your blood vessels need to expand to allow more blood flow, that's going to keep your arteries nice and flexible. All right, so we've got, uh, this is looking pretty good. We've got those greens wilted down and we are going to drain some of the liquid in this into our blender jar to make the sauce that's going to go over this. So we're going to move back over here to our blender. And just a, just a little word about a blender. Um, most of this stuff you can do in your traditional blender. It's not going to blend it up quite as smooth. This is a Vitamix. There's a Blendtec, which is also a powerful blender. But I encourage you, if you're wanting to go more plant-based things and do some of the dressings and sauces and things that I do with nuts and seeds and dates and things like that, you want to save your, save your dollars, not your pennies, but your dollars, because this is a major appliance and it costs about the same as a major appliance. But I use this more than any other appliance in my kitchen, pretty much. I use it every day if not once, twice, sometimes three times. So it's just, it's very, it's worth every penny. I've had this thing for about 20 years and it's still, I mean, this base is the same. Never had a problem with it. I do switch out these because they get pretty crummy looking and they start to leak sometimes and stuff. But um, well worth, well worth every penny. I went through a few blenders before I broke down and bought one of these because they just weren't holding up to the, the grinding of all the heavy, heavy things. So, okay, our, our sauce is going to be, i got to grab a drink. Um, our sauce is going to be a quarter cup of sunflower seeds, quarter cup of sesame seeds, onion powder, garlic powder, and lemon juice. And we need four tablespoons of lemon juice. So we've got our half a cup of sunflower seeds and sesame seeds right there. Seeds, by the way, are high in fiber. They're high in lignans, which are anti-cancer compounds. They're high in minerals. They're high in protein. Seeds are higher in protein than nuts. You know, people think nuts are so great for protein, and they are, but seeds are even better. Pine nuts are actually one of your best. And then we got a half a cup of onion powder and a, or half a cup, half a, ta half a teaspoon of onion powder and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Half a cup of onion powder, wow. <laughs> that would be bad. Okay. And then we need um, some lemon juice. We're going to go with four tablespoons of lemon juice. Oop. Okay, and then we are going to take our... Take our contents from this, and this is kind of like if you were at my January class. I don't know, was anybody at my January class when I did lasagna? No. Hmm? Oh, you were there. This is kind of like what we did with our, the inside for our, our lasagna. We poured the juice into the blender and blended it up with some nuts and seeds to make a creamy sauce. I'm just doing that same thing kind of tonight with this. And you hope that the lid doesn't slip out and go on the floor. I shouldn't even say that. <laughs> and we want just enough in there so it'll blend up nice and that's probably good.
this over here. And we're going to throw in our lentils. So you guys familiar with lentils? They are in the legume family. So you've got beans, peas, and lentils. We're doing some beans, other types of beans tonight. Lentils are super high in protein. These are brown lentils. You're going to want to use the brown lentils, not the orange lentils, because they are more for making Indian dal, which is they're a very creamy. They cook very creamy. Um, so you want the, either the brown or the green. I think these were the green. And it's a cup. And what I've done is I just cook or boil a two and a quarters cup of water and put the, put the lentils in there and let them cook kind of like rice. It takes about 25, 25 to 30 minutes until they get soft. If I haven't mentioned this, super high protein um, legume. Beans, beans, the magical food. The more you eat, the healthier you are. And that's, the lentils are in that category. They um, stabilize blood sugar, decrease your desire for sweets, and help you stay full. They're very satisfying. They're one of the main foods, foods in the blue zone. The blue zone, the blue zones in the world are the countries that have the most centenarians that live to be 100 or more. And they're active and healthy. They're not in rest homes. They're out hiking hills and um, playing with their grandkids and gardening and and the, the common food that they eat is beans, and they eat a plant-based a plant -based diet. Plant-strong diet with a little bit of fish, maybe some goat milk or goat cheese, but very plant-dominant. All right, we're going to pour this into our pan. Beans are high in, high in fiber, and all plant foods are high in fiber. Fiber is great for moving toxins, fat, unwanted fats, cholesterol, um, hormones that our body's trying to get rid of. It's so important to have lots of fiber in our diet. Great thing about fiber, fiber too, or about beans too, is they can contain a lot of resistant starch. That resistant starch uh, passes through the normal digestion process and goes into the large intestine. Undigested is where it ferments which is where sometimes we have a problem with beans. But that fermentation is feeding our gut microbes. And if you're familiar with your microbiome and the importance of having good gut bacteria in your, in your gut, which is all over your body, um, we, need to, we need to feed those microbes. And you're feeding them with short-chain fatty acids, which is produced by those um, microbes eating that fermentation of the beans. And that uh, short-chain fatty acids are responsible for so many aspects of our health, decreasing inflammation, increasing your immune system, all sorts of, all sorts of great things, keeping you healthy. All right, we're going to add just a little bit of salt to this. And this is kind of dependent on everybody kind of has different salt tastes. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with just about, mm, about a half a teaspoon just because those mushrooms really add a lot of flavor. And I'll have this available if you guys want to put a little on top. But now you can, I know traditionally, I know when I was a kid and we had stroganoff, we had it on noodles. I like to use whole grains as much as I can. Whole wheat pasta is, is fine. Um, whole wheat bread is fine. But what's better is the whole grain. So I like to serve this over brown rice, which is what we're going we're gonna to do. And I'm going to turn on the heat on that because that is not hot rice. We'll just, um, just warm that up a little bit. OK, we'll just keep that off to the side there and move on to our kale salad. So um, I hope you're all familiar with kale. <laughs> it's, it's your most, your highest antioxidant leafy green, or one of them. It's like rated 1,000 on high, um, antioxidant um, units. And so this is, a loss, or this is a curly leaf kale. And a lot of times when I'm cooking it, I use the stock. Because if I'm putting it in a real chunky cooked dish, that the chunks of that stalk are great. And I, I feel like the stalk, that's like the bloodline to the plant. There's nutrients in there. I don't want to throw it away. But for a salad, I want to, I'm going to take most of the stalk off, not all of it. 
And you know what I do with these stocks? <laughs> I munch on them. I know, I'm weird. <laughs> but they're, they're actually not too bad. They're very anti-inflammatory. Lots of great nutrients in them. In fact, if I'm doing a cooked, a cooked dish, it's really good to get raw cruciferous vegetables in when you're eating cooked cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables have double the protection against cancer as other food, as other green leafy vegetables. They have powerful anti-cancer compounds. And these are cruciferous vegetables in particular. Uh, spinach and, and Swiss chard and beet greens, they don't have the anti-cancer compounds like these do. I'm sure they have some. But um, kale and other cruciferous vegetables, which include broccoli and cabbage. Um, in fact, I think I've got a few of them listed on, on underneath your salad. Uh, salad ingredients, um, but they um, increase liver detoxification, they kill cancer cells. There's compounds in here that actually go in your body and they seek out damaged cells in your body and they destroy them. They seek to destroy them, tag your immune system so it knows that they're there and your immune system comes along and destroys it. Dr. Joel Furman, he's one of my favorite, um, favorite nutrition experts, and I'm going to chop these olives. I'm going to put some olives in here because we need some oils. If you've ever seen anybody massage kale, has anybody seen somebody massage kale? Because it's, it's pretty tough to eat raw like this, but I'm going to massage it, and most people put in olive oil. I'm not going to use olive oil. I'm going to use olives, and we're going to get the oils from the olives, and, and that oil is bound to the fibers in the olives, which is going to keep those oils from going where you don't want them to go. And this is, a, this is a smaller blade. The one that I use for the onions is this larger blade. This is a smaller blade. And look at this, look at this, this olive. You know that the antioxidant components of a plant is the color. Look how dark that, I mean, there's a ton of antioxidants in there. You eat olive oil, you're not getting any of that. It's all down the trash. <laughs> so we want to use the whole olive. And olives are delicious. They're very high in salt. So we don't need to put any salt in this salad necessarily because it's going to have some already from the olives. Plus the balsamic vinegar is going to give it some great flavor as well as the lemon, <clears throat> lemon juice. So we'll just put those right in there. Let's see, we'll need that next. And then what we're going to do, we're going to dump our uh, lemon juice in here, which is a third a cup, and we're going to Take our hands, and we're going to get into that kale and massage it really good. Mm. This is going to break down the fibers. And of course, that lemon juice is going to help with that as well. So in cruciferous vegetables, um, I was saying that I like to have a little bit of raw cruciferous with my cooked. And the reason is some of those anti-cancer compounds are, are in, they're in different parts of the cell of the plant. I'm going to get just a little technical here for a second. It's, they're in a little bit different parts of the plant. And so when you chop, kind of like the onion, when you chop up this, this leafy green or you chew it in your mouth, you're creating some enzymes, myrosinase, glucosinolates, and all kinds of other micronutrients, I'm sure. And those two compounds, when you chop and chew, they come together in their raw form and create isothiocyanides. And those are those really powerful anti-cancer compounds that literally kill and destroy cancer cells. When we cook it, we destroy myrosinase. We still have the other one, though. It's intact. And so, because you kill it, what you want to do is you want to bring that in with some raw cruciferous. And then you're going to bring that into the dish or, or your meal, and you're going, to, you're going to create those compounds. So that's why if I'm cooking some kale, which I cook a lot of kale. I love cooked steamed kale. Um, I will have some raw in the form of those, <laughs> those stalks. But we're leaving this, we're leaving this raw tonight.
Another way to get uh, raw kale into your diet is through green smoothies. I love to do like a green drink. I did demonstrated one in my class a couple months ago. It was just um, basically spinach and a leaf of kale. I think I put the kale in it. And a little bit of, um, actually it was just greens and water. Oh, and some, some celery. Celery, oh, celery. It's been a while since I've done this one. Celery, cucumber, and uh, spinach, and a little bit of cilantro. Makes a really nice green drink. The secret is to put a lot of water in it, though, so it's not thick. You don't want it thick like a smoothie. And the reason I do that instead of a fruit smoothie is um, you got to be careful with the fruit smoothies. You can get too much fruit going down, going down the hatch all at once. You know, you want to um, you want to make it more green leafies. All right, this is looking really good. We want that kale nice and bright, and you can kind of feel it. It starts to get really nice and tender. So that's how you massage kale. If you ever have a recipe where it calls for massaging kale and it calls for olive oil, don't do the olive oil. Get some olives and a little bit of lemon juice or even some vinegar. You could probably just do the olives. I'm going to put that to soak there. <clears throat> All right, and then we're going to add some, some more vegetables to our salad. All right, while I've got, oh, I don't have my, we're going to go ahead and add some red onion, a little bit of raw onion to this. And it's good to add raw onion. That's another thing when you're eating like cooked, a cooked meal, chop up a little bit of scallions or a little bit of red onion and put that with your meal because that's going to, the raw onion is really great. I mean, onions across the board are wonderful foods, but um, the raw in particular are really great those compounds all the compounds are still really active and we're going to go with like a half a cup of raw onion i believe raw onion one cup of finely chopped red onion i'm not going to use a full cup that's a lot of onion so you might want to change that unless you really really like raw um, red onion i don't want to over overkill you guys and then we're going to go with a red bell pepper Talk about an, a high antioxidant food, red, red bell peppers. They have more vitamin C than oranges. And again, those antioxidants, which vitamin C is an antioxidant, are important for decreasing oxidation, keeping you looking young. Red jalapenos and those types of peppers are the same any kind of pepper, super high in vitamin C. Try to cut that that quick with a knife, right? <laughs> Such a great tool. Right, I think that's all of that that I need. All right, and then we're going to add some corn. And during the good part of the year, when we've got some fresh corn on the cob, that's what you want to use. But I bought some organic corn from Costco. They were these little half ears. They were organic. They looked really great. They didn't taste very good at all. So I'm using the raw. Um, or I'm just using the frozen corn that's been thawed that I get at Costco. It's a really great sweet corn. I really like it. But again, the raw is especially really good. And then we're going to add some tomatoes. And kind of like the corn, this isn't the great time of year for tomatoes. But I got the grape tomatoes, which are usually a little bit better. So I've got a couple cups of those to go in there. And then we're going to go with some fresh basil. And you, fresh basil, you got to use fre fresh basil. It's key for this salad, making this salad really good. I've already got that chopped up. And this was an entire, um, this entire container. There was a few leaves that got a little black in there, so I cut those off. But pretty much that whole container. And you can, you know, adjust how you want. Oh, that rice is going to burn on me. Hold on. Oh, 
We're in good shape. That's good. Okay, and then we're going to do some kidney beans. More beans in here. We're going to use about two cups. And then we're going to do some quinoa. And you can use quinoa or millet. I really like millet in this salad. It couples nice with the, the hardiness of the kale. But um, I think because I just like quinoa too. So we're going to do quinoa tonight. I think most people prefer the, the quinoa over the, over the millet. Millet's a little bit more of a hearty, like, like I mentioned, it's a little bit hardier of a grain. And um, it gets a little bit, I don't know if you know, if you notice how rice, when you put it in the refrigerator, it gets a little hard and um, starchy. Quino, uh, millet is more apt to do that. And so quinoa holds up better. I mean, most, most of the time, unless you're feeding a lot of people, you're going to have leftovers of this salad. And the quinoa is much nicer in the refrigerator. It's, it's much softer grain. It won't get starchy like. And quinoa is a pseudo grain, which means it's a seed, super high in protein, a really great seed grain, high in minerals, protein. By the way, another thing about leafy greens, they're high in omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, greens are where you get omega-3 fatty acids. The fish eat the algae in the ocean, and that's how they get their omega-3 fatty acids that we like to eat fish for. Fish is very polluted. Oceans are very polluted. It's good to decrease our consumption of seafood if we can. And this is one cup of quinoa. Quinoa cooks really fast, too, much faster than rice or millet. It'll cook within about 10 minutes. And then we're going to put uh, three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar or more. I may go, I think I might go a little bit more just because that bunch of kale was really big. The salad's looking really big. <laughs> Where did my other spoon go? Oh, there it is. You guys can see that on the monitor. It does not look so, that's one thing about this salad, it's so beautiful, which makes it taste better. You know, if it looks great, it tastes great. And all that color is all those antioxidants, and every plant has its own unique compound. Just like every plant has its own unique microbiome, like we do. Our, the gut bacteria that reside in and on our body, it's unique to you. Everybody's is a little bit different. And every plant food has its own unique microbiome. And when we eat those plants, it goes into our body. Probiotics are a good thing to take if you've been on antibiotics and you need to really up your, you know, your probiotic intake. But the best way to get probiotics is right here in the food, plant foods. All right. That is it for that salad. We'll just set that out there. Put that spoon in there. And we need to do our ice cream, get that going, um, so it can be freezing. I firmly believe that dessert is an important part of a good, healthy diet, but not every day. <laughs> um, my desserts are, a lot of them are made with nuts and dates dates to sweeten, nuts to give it that fatty, rich feel. And so I tell people, if you're going to make these desserts, make them when you have lots of friends to share them with, you know, a, an event, a party, family, Sunday dinner with your family and your kids, and you've got people to share it with. Because when they're healthy like this, your brain tells you you can eat it all the time every night, and it's good for you, and so you can have it. This is still very high calorie, very high fat dessert, okay? This is not going to help you with your weight loss goals <laughs> if you have them every day. So this is just a great way to enjoy desserts in a healthy way that's not going to hurt you in any way. So again, what I've got here is I've got dates, my sweetener, and cashews are going to be my cream, my base cream. And I've got this soaking in three cups of water, and it's cold. I want it cold because I, when I put it in my, in my ice cream freezer, it needs to be cold so it'll freeze correctly and quickly. So I'm just going to dump everything in there. So that's three cups of water, one cup of pitted dates, and these are the small 
Deglet Nor Pitta dates. You can get them at Costco in a tub about that big. They're the most economical. You can buy the medjool dates, which are in a smaller container. They're much more expensive. They are pitted, and they're very decadent, delicious. I love them. I just hate to blend them because they are kind of expensive. Um, and then the cashews, you can get those at Natural Grocer. They're raw, unsalted. And then, oh yes, and we want to add, okay, so this blends up great the way it is. You know how when you made uh, frozen ice cream out of homemade, frozen, homemade ice cream out of the, the crank or even the powered ice cream maker, you know, when you were a kid, and how it was very watery and it melted very, very fast? Um, this, these beans kind of keep it from melting so fast for, for whatever reason. It just adds a little bit more heaviness to it. You don't want to add too many, but I'm going to add about three quart, three quart, half, about a half a cup, actually, half to three quarters of a cup. And then we're going to do a couple, ta couple teaspoons of vanilla. And then we're going to blend. Mm. So this thing will heat up. That's why I want to start off with some cold stuff. Now here's your vanilla ice cream right here. You might want to add a little bit more vanilla if you're just going to do vanilla. But we're going to do strawberry ice cream tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple cups of strawberries, frozen strawberries. They're somewhat thawed a little bit, just so they'll blend easy. Gonna shake that a little bit. I hate to put this thing down in there because it just gets all full of that cream and it's hard to get off and it's kind of messy. So I'm just gonna shake it. Okay, so there's our cream for our strawberry ice cream. And we're going to put this in our freezer. So this is the dates, nuts, and, and water is your, kind of your base for any kind of ice cream. You can do a chocolate ice cream. I do, I've done a, a pecan, a maple pecan ice cream. It's got a little bit of maple syrup in it, and I use pecans instead of cashews. Um, you can do a mint chocolate chip. I did a shamrock shake last month where I put some spinach in it and a little bit of mint. So you could do um, a little bit of spinach to make it green, the mint, and, or the mint, yeah, the mint, and then a little bit of chocolate chips. Anyway, you can just get creative with it. Dates, water, and nuts. And then the beans are just a little addition. That's actually the original recipe that I found was just the dates, uh, just the, the dates, nuts, and water, and vanilla. And then a friend of mine that came to my class, she kind of came up with the bean thing. She threw some beans in there, and she's like, oh, April, you got to try it. It makes it just even more rich and good. And anyway, so, and it does. It makes it just a little bit better. So I don't know if you guys are familiar. Who's got one of these freezers? Anybody? Okay. You can get these at Costco maybe this time of year. I haven't seen them, but they usually have them in during the summertime. So I've got my, um, I've got my, my, my power right here. And it's got a little spindle on it there. We're going to put this. It's got that right there. You're going to put that on there. You're going to put the lid on. And then you're going to turn it on first. As soon as it hits that freezer, it thaws immediately. I've done it without turning it on first. And you're, you're toast. <laughs> you can't do it. So I'm going to uh, plug this in and get it going. And then we're going to pour the contents down here into this.
And because I don't like to waste anything, although it's pretty full. <laughs> so we'll have to waste a little. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chopper, which I just thought about tonight. I was like, hey, I can chop those strawberries. We're going to add some strawberry chunks in as it, after, after it, yeah, after it um, churns for a little bit, we'll add these in. you can get fresh strawberries. I didn't know how the fresh strawberries would be yet. It might be a little bit early. What's that? Oh, I did? I think it'll be fine. Oh my gosh. I talked about stopping it before or starting it before you put that in. That's even worse. <laughs> or could be worse. Okay. with it and it's not spinning so hopefully it'll be okay we might have a strawberry milkshake maybe I don't know I hope I hope not I hope not okay all right so we're gonna um, I'm just gonna show you a little bit with our salad what I've got for the salad tonight let me get rid of that So if you don't already, I want you guys to start having a big leafy green salad every day. Make it the main dish of at least one meal every day. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a little bit of lettuce and cucumber and tomato, your traditional salad stuff. I mean, it can be like this, but we're talking like a leafy green salad that you put a dressing on. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make it a main dish salad. So I'm using the, the spring mix salad that you get, you know, in the, in the tubs. And the great thing about that is, you know, I talked about how every plant food has its own microbiome, its own bacteria composition. Um, when you, it, gastroenterologists that specialize in gut health, they tell you to eat at least 30 plant foods a week. I've heard one person say a day. I can't imagine 30 a day is a lot. So I'm going to go with 30 a week. Um, but a good way to get that, get there, is eat that combination of greens in your salad every day. So there's like five different leafy greens in that spring mix. So what I've got here is that. I've also added, and this is what I add pretty much every day, you want to add a cruciferous vegetable. So like a kale, you could, what I've done before is massage some kale like that with either tahini. Tahini works really good as well, I didn't mention that. Some olives even just some balsamic vinegar, and I keep that in a little bowl in the fridge, and I can take a handful and throw that in my salad. What I do normally is I, I grate some purple cabbage. Purple cabbage is one of your most economical, highest nutrient cruciferous vegetables. You can get a whole head of purple cabbage for pretty cheap. And so that's kind of my go-to cruciferous that I add to the salad. So we want leafy greens, a cruciferous vegetable, and broccoli and, and um, Cauliflower are cruciferous as well, but I don't care for raw broccoli or cauliflower. If you want to add that, great. But I like the purple cabbage. It adds some nice color. And then I like to add carrot. And actually carrots, you absorb more of the nutrients in a carrot when it's cooked. 
but I like the crunch of a carrot, so I've added that. And then we've got, we want to add some raw, um, raw onion to your salad. And I left that out just because I know some people just don't like raw onion. Try to get used to it if you can. And you can add that. Um, what I also want to add to my raw salad every day is some, is some beans. I love garbanzo beans in a salad. Kidney beans are great. Um, you know, any kind of bean. Those are my two favorite. So I've got that on the side here too. And another thing you want to add, and so again, bread is okay, whole wheat bread's okay, whole wheat pasta's okay, but the whole grain is better. And so what I've got here, I was cooking this up for my, for my salad that I have every day for lunch, and I thought as I was cooking, I thought I should take this with me and, and let you guys try this. So what this is, it's a combination of buckwheat, quinoa, and millet. Those are all, uh, well, Buckwheat and quinoa are pseudo grains. Millet is just a regular grain. But I, I cook them together because they cook really well together. And again, you're getting that combination, adding to that 30 plant foods because every grain is different, getting the micronutrients. Super easy to cook, doesn't take any more time. I just boil a couple cups of water and add in a half a cup of each. And super easy, it cooks up the same. So we've got that. What's that? Buckwheat, you can, get it, you can get that at Natural Grocer. You might be able to get it at Smith's or Albertson's. What's that? What's that? Oh, um, yeah, you might have to go to Natural Grocer for it. Or you can probably order it online, too. It's a, it's a really great high-protein grain, although it's very weird to eat plain. If, you, if you're not a fan of quinoa, you know how quinoa is very kind of airy and light? Buckwheat's even more so. It's, it just has a really weird taste to it. I don't like it plain. You mix it in with a combination of quinoa and millet or even just quinoa. Um, it makes it just really good. So anyway, I'm going to have this for you guys to throw in your salad too. And then one more thing, one more grain that I love. And that is sorghum, which is a different grain. I've been venturing out into my grains. I didn't used to eat a lot of grains because I thought that they were kind of not, ne not necessary foods, not important foods. But I've learned over the years that they are very important. We need to add whole grains and get lots of whole grains in our diet. And I've discovered this grain called, it's a sorghum. It's sorghum grain. It's where sorghum syrup, like sweetening syrup, comes from. And it's super, the grain itself is super cheap. It's less than like a dollar a pound. Again, you can find it at Natural Grocer. I've ordered like a 25 pound bag of it because I love it. And I sprout this. So this is sprouted and I, it's cooked separate. But anyway, I just, I wanted to bring it so you guys could try it and putting it on your salad. And I've got bowls so you can have a salad separate from your other stuff. Some brown rice. All right, you guys can come on up. I'll get some plates here.